All right, I just got to tap this one straight into my veins. It is going to be more 3DB. What is up, folks? Welcome back. More 1v1s, and it's going to be 3DB versus Hera. Hera starting to ramp up his playtime again. You know, after a long break away, I think the first... Uh, like, what was it? He played a few days when it first came out, and then I think there was, there was a point where he was up to 16 days where I think he hadn't played or something like that. It was kind of crazy. Now he's just, just perpetually on the grind, right? Up to 366 games, 59% win rate, non-stop grinding it out. And in this game, he will be doing so as the Mongols on Nagari. And he's going to be up against 3DB, the infamous 3DB, the 3DB that we're honestly fanboying. And I can't praise this guy enough. I think 3DB is one of the biggest innovators, and I think it's going to be one of the biggest winners with AoE4 in 2022. Uh, so for those that don't know, he is a StarCraft 2 player. He's won probably about $10,000 after competing for maybe like three years. So not not great, not terrible though, like reasonable. You can see potential, like he's earning, he's actually you know, getting a, a little bit of that bang for buck. Uh, and he is from Russia, and it's, it kind of fits with my theme, right? Like I always say that CIS is the region of like these kind of pub stomp stars or these kind of like flashy, they've got muxy type players, right? And I think 3DB has got that in quantities and quantities, right? He's got so much Muxy about him. The way he plays, the confidence he does it with, right? It's something that is so refreshing to see. Because we always talk about these players that have, have done through, you know, found out through trial and error, winning and losing 100 times over. Like, what is the correct play here? And what's the correct play there, right? And they, they stay within the lines, right? They never actually get out of line. But 3DB is not like that. 3DB... He's got that young blood attitude, and you can feel it. Like he will get out of line with his maneuvers. He will try something that someone might say is very cocky, disrespectful, whatever, right? But he finds a way of making it work. And it reminds me of so many games where this happens. Dota, CS:GO. I've seen it like Valorant, right? You get these like youngsters that come in. I sound like an old man. These youngsters come in and they just do what they want, and they damn well make it work. And 3DB does exactly that. And I'm looking forward to seeing how he's going to make it work with Delhi. I don't think it's too hard to imagine, though, folks. Nagari, you know what he's already doing. He's onto the center island, uh, or center lake, rather. And the reason is because once you're on there, there is no way Hera is getting onto that lake. And Hera doesn't seem to have really played for it. He'll play safe on his own dock. And if he's not able to get on the center lake now, this gives him a hard timer, at which he has to kind of, like, close out this game. I think that's what happens if you don't engage with Nagari's center lake. Uh, we've seen too often, if these games do go late, whoever has control of Center Lake tends to end up with control of the game because they're much quicker into like this Castle Age and Pure Age timings. They have a more scalable economy and they're not going to be drained as quickly as you are. Open and wise, free to be. Only has six people on the wood line. I think there was more from the Mongol player. And oh no, the scouts! Oh no, free to be! We said about these outer line plays. This is one of them. Hera can't actually redeploy his TC. He got caught being a little bit greedy with it, and he still won't get it down. And this is so costly. Folks, every 20 seconds you count on that clock is another villager he falls behind. And 3DB is just not letting up. And remember, these scouts, they regenerate over time. So if you can't stay on top of them and kill them with the villagers, you're in deep doo-doo right now. 3DB spamming out the second scout, mainly for this as a prioritization. We know he likes to do it for the vision to gather the sheep as well, but the denial here. Even if he eventually loses the scouts, this pays for itself. This is so smart. I'm just counting the time. It's been like almost a minute already. And the scout will be distracted. Not long enough though. Oh my God. This is where I wish I had VoIPs. I wish I could hear what Hera is saying right now. I feel like there'd be a lot of beeping that uh, beeping filter required before I stick it onto YouTube though. And no one's again. <laughs> Okay, does he deploy the sheep? Deploy the sheep right now. It looks like he wants to get the sheep out there. He doesn't want to give economy over. So he said, okay, I've had my fun. He can redeploy now. But important lesson learned. So Hera's not going to move this again. <laughs> not anytime soon. So I think maybe he sniped a few sheep around here as well. But both scouts get away. They'll return three of these sheep. And that was at least a whole minute of Hera not being able to produce villages. So he's currently sitting at 13 eco. And 3DB is at 23. That is an insane advantage to have at four and a half minutes into the game. But it's what 3DB has achieved. And it's almost like, you know, we, we set the precursor, right? We set the mood for this. We said 3DB is a player that likes to get out of line. And whether you think it's disrespectful or you think it's a little bit too cheeky, he just clapped Hera's cheeks. That's for sure. And part of this is because, right, like, 
You could argue, oh, well, why is Hera that far behind? He could have been producing fishing ships. No, he couldn't. Folks, his one drop-off location for wood was the TC. That's the double value that 3DB got out of that. And that's why it was worth maybe sacrificing a few sheep and whatever to do that. It's because he's standing there. He's running around with his opponent. He's not only stopping the TC from deploying and thus producing more villages, but also preventing any drop-off of resource gathering in Hera's base. He basically hit the break entirely on Hera's economy for a minute and a half, almost two minutes before the five-minute mark. That is a ridiculous advantage to obtain. Well, Villager will be scouted out trying to put down a second dock on the north side, but you don't really care if you're free to be. If anything, you can now run one of these fishing boats over this side and just keep it scouting in case your opponent tries to get in the water. You don't have to do that too quickly, by the way. There is no way in hell that Hera is going to be ready to get on the water in the next uh, minute, just because of the delay here. And you know you're probably on the backwater already. And Khan, in the meantime, looking for value. All he's going to find is the painful news that 3DB is already on his way to a tech up. And look at the gold gathering. Look at the food gathering, right? 3DB is going to be in a situation where he'll be close to ready to just immediately tech up twice. And then Hera, maybe just about, like, he'll be in his feudal, but he'll be nowhere near castle. It's also frustrating how far away his gold line is, actually. Think about the difference here. It takes so much longer to run to his. So, and then, like, where are you going to run to afterwards, right? There's only a small wood line here. I guess the berry bushes you could. Gold line there. Gold back here. Either way, a little bit frustrating. I think, like, 3DB has a more natural flow towards these bigger gold veins, whereas you feel like you're going to head backwards, right? Like, you don't have a gold vein here and then another one here, or a gold vein here and then another one here, right? Whereas, if you're 3DB, you've got another gold vein here, and then you hop into a giant fat stack right here. So, 3DB finally losing that villager. Hera, currently 24, 34, so he's got closed it a bit, right? He's kept the production up with the fishing boats. Uh, that's definitely a big part of it. I do think 3DB could have one upped him further. He could have genuinely put like another dock here, produce even more fishing boats, and ensured that his opponent never catches up. But as we said, 3DB, his priority is this. Look, tech gets complete. Now look at his resources. Almost ready to immediately go up into the castle age. The only reason he's not doing it straight away is because he's prepping scholars, right? Because once he arrives there, he wants to get more value. And also, he's going for sanctity. Understanding that his opponent is delayed right now in his timings, still not cracking feudal, and also the slowdown in his economy, it means that Hera is unlikely to be guarding the sacred site. So he could easily just get into sanctity and probably get value in a meta and in a patch where usually it's impossible for Delhi players to feel like they can do that anymore, courtesy of moving sanctity up to the feudal age and courtesy of its... Research time feeling heavily nerfed, still taking five minutes once you get there. So there we go. Enough resources if he wants to. Continues to produce the scholars though, just spamming them out. Uh, he's laying down the blacksmiths, but I think this should just be an immediate castle age timing. I don't know if he's a little bit paranoid that it's too greedy, but I think you 100% can get away with it here. Almost just feels like 3DB is toying with his opponent more than anything, right? Like, there's no... I don't think there's any reason to really hold back now. Like, you've got Scholars producing, so that's not your limitation. And there it is. House of Learning being dropped. I love that he's slightly delayed it just because of the mosques production, right? He wants to have enough mosques in place that he's filling them up with the Scholars. And the idea is that the timings will now match up between having about six Scholars and your House of Learning completing, right? And that's actually a very big deal. It means that you'll be able to very quickly get into Home Blades, and that means you'll be able to go for a direct and immediate transition into, like, quadruple barracks drop and then mana arm spam and then just run across the map at your opponent. Could be chooses Lancers as well, actually. I like Lancers also against the Mongols here. Like, Lancers can be wonky against Mongols when they open up spears, sure. But you understand that Hera hasn't gone for any military. He can't. He genuinely can't in this situation. Because he got so delayed on his feudal timing, there is no way he's going for like early aggression off the back of Arax. So you understand that Hera is probably not going to look to fight you until he has Castle Age. Which, by the way, amazing recovery coming out from Hera. Look at his numbers right now. 35 eco compared to 3DB's 42. 3DB slowed down, and now he's being punished for it. As the tech up is ready for Hera, and I believe it's already underway. Yeah, step readout being built over here by eight people. So he's going to more or less match, because the House of Lions has only been built with five. Economy-wise, like, Hera isn't as far behind as he really should be for how this went down. And a lot of this is because I feel like 3DB hasn't been perma-producing fishing boats. You can see he just, like, got caught not constantly producing them there, right? He's going to fix it a little bit now, but it's just one at a time. 
And this is partially due to like 3 dbs current resource situation, right? He invested so much wood into this infrastructure that he wasn't able to just queue up two, three, maybe even four. He is now finally getting a dock down this side and double archery range drop. So we will see his economy ramp up again. And keep in mind what we said before, right? Hera is actually 100% on the clock. He has this back dock. There's a finite amount of fish here. He does at least have one deep water fish that will slowly regenerate. But ultimately, there is going to come a point in the game where food is going to become a wonky transition as he'll need to put down the pastures en masse. Scout will be sniped out. Fishing boat's too late to punish the Khan for it. And this scout needs to back up himself. Behera. Looking well poised, considering he cannot play on Senna Nagari map. Could this be the first time we have watched in a high level match a player who was denied access to the center leg entirely win the game? Want to find out. Sacred Sight has been capped in the meantime. Hera, quick to move across, punch that. Doesn't want to get that gold treacle, remember? The Delhi get double the amount of gold treacle per minute, so 200 a minute. Decent boost their economy you don't want to give over. That's basically effectively saving you five villages. Possibly less when you consider that uh, when you are playing as Delhi, you of course get these researches for free, which you can see he's now doing. No forced march play yet out of Free DB is a little bit surprising to me. I think forced march is absolutely like pivotal and amazing tech to get your hands on. He actually hasn't researched anything here. I'm very confused about what. Oh wait, hold on a sec. I'm an idiot. Okay, he has researched one thing, but he's not queued the others. So I was looking at Heroes by mistake, but even when we look at 3DBs, 3DB isn't queuing any others. He's only researched the Wedge Rivets. And these are all free, remember. I don't understand why he's not doing this. I think it's just like a mis... Like a mis... Interpretation. Not even misinterpretation, right? He's just full on miss this. He's going to fix it now, but like, why are you not queuing up multiple researchers, right? These are free researchers. There is no reason to not just click two or three at a time to make sure you're not falling behind. I'm at least happy with his docks now, like constantly tweaking out new fishing boats instead of just being delayed all the time. And straight in with the Tower Wall Elephant. That was the plan. The double archer range drop, and he already has the resources to invest heavily into the elephants. And look at it. Lance is trying to be doubled up in the production. He might get one load out. I don't think two Lances can deal with Tower Wall Elephant, though. And he'll just have to back them away, trying to build more stables right now. This is not looking good for Hera, though. Hera only has his Khan in his enemy's base. Can snipe out villagers at a decent pace, as you're seeing. Like, I don't know how he has the vision here, but the tree line's just enough breach that he can. But with the arrows that's now researched, this should force the Khan away. The problem is in his base. Hera snipes out a little bit of economy, but has no way of sniping out these war elephants. He tries to transition to Springles now, has dropped the Siege Workshop. But these Springles can get sniped very quickly. You can see the Tower War Elephants, although they are slower than Springles, once they get in range, you just feel like you're running the whole time. One mistake I will say, I do feel like 3DB should be finishing off these lances. The other Tower Wall Elephant might do it for you. And he has left one behind to deal with the stable. So this is really good. No more military production outside of Springles for Hera. Hera needs a solution. He needs it fast. Repairs. Nicely played. War Elephant really needs to move onto the Villager line, if anything. And there you go. They change targets. So let's start to snipe this down. Really important that Hera micros these villages in a way that prioritizations will always on his military units. So they can repair the Springles and never lose any villages for it. Oof, dodgy situation there as well. He might still lose the spring because he has no wood left, right? Hera ran out. I can't believe it. actually he ran out fully in the end. So it's nice to have another wall up for it though. These are definitely good trades to the most, but it might just start to get bad for you. Like you can't gather gold anymore. And if the war elephant just stands here, it's actually decent value. The problem is with two springles, that's going to become uh, an impossibility at this rate. I think right now what 3DB actually needs is a transition. He needs to throw something else in the mix. I would genuinely be a big fan of just going for like a stable or two down here and just spamming out scouts. You need something that runs in and snipes the springles, basically. That's your big limitation right now, and it is going to hurt you as this goes on. You can see how he's been toyed with. Like He's sniping out villagers here and there, but he's never getting the springles anymore because they just quickly run one or two over and repair. And in fact, if we look at the eco side of things, 3DB currently 58. Hera is at 43, so you can see he is suffering from this. But Hera, like, his food is fantastic right now. His goal is the limitation due to the Springles. At this rate, we could see him just look to try and push straight into an imp timing. But he does need to solve the issue of Tower War Elephants right now. Tower War Elephants that are still trickling out one by one. <laughs> this is so frustrating. Like, he only has this one TC, right? See how many villagers got queued up. He'll wish he had them. 
A few of them are even AFK right now, which is a bit of a whoopsie daisy. In fact, 12 of them are AFK. What? What? Okay. I think that was bug for us. Yeah, that was bug for Seven Garrison. It, there was a delay on them actually uh, being registered as not idle. Yeah, just the the biggest crux is this, right? Like, he just stands here, and even if he ends up losing these war elephants each time, it's good value because right now you can't gather gold at all. And if you can't gather gold as Hero, you can never hit that in-page timing, and you won't be able to keep Spring production up long term. So yeah, new wall elephant coming in on both sides. And he sees the pinch opportunity. Gur moving out to hunt over here. Another Gur pushing over this way as well. But right now, I just don't envy Hera's position. He's slowly building up a Springwood army, yes. But he's never really able to expand his economy. Every time this War Elephant comes in, it's getting at least two, maybe three of these villages. And while that doesn't seem like a great trade, the fact that 3DB can sustain it makes it a good trade because his economy continues to scale upwards while his opponent is just flatlining, right? Tower Elephant's in. Another one gets sniped down. One or two more villages dying. Khan almost dead as well. Has got the Yam speed effect now, so these Spirals moving incredibly fast, especially with the maneuver as well, up to 1.53. So this Tower Wall Elephant should be long for this world. Could have hidden it inside the Stealth Forest, but remember, you're up against the Khan here, so he'd be able to see you a little bit deeper into the line anyway. Yeah, so inevitably going to die. But still has more of them coming, right? Still no switch up at all. Moving forward on a new goal line, is starting to gather up these relics as well, so his gold treacle is going to ramp up very quickly. What was I like to say, Rapido? Went for everything else first before going back for the home blades. A little bit surprising. Uh, I guess the main reason behind this is like one or two of them isn't, aren't too bad at this stage in the game, and they actually research at a quick timing, whereas home blades, as we can see very clearly there, is completely utterly bugged right now, because despite the fact that he has got three scholars in a building nearby, it still is going to take him 15 minutes and 43 seconds to research home blades. Now, I understand, folks, that home blades was a little bit broken before, especially considering it wasn't only for damage plus to the men at arms and the lancers, but was also bugged in giving man at arms an additional plus one. But now it's plus three. I think we can chill on this, folks. I think we can be a bit more reasonable with the timings. And although you might think it's reasonable to put it down to 12 and a half minutes, this is five scholars to do so. Pretty nuts. So 3DB actually slowed down the rate at which he was pushing out the wall elephants just to regroup them. He's now up to three on the front line here, but his opponent does has a, have a decent number of springles. And we haven't seen that switch still. I'm kind of a little bit shocked that 3DB is just doing this. It's, it's kind of a little bit cheesy at this stage. He's able to sustain Tower Wall Offense in surplus now, as you can see. But he could easily afford to go for, like, horsemen or scouts, right? And instead, he's actually going for barracks. Now, the Man Arms aren't bad, but they are slow. And my concern right now is, like, yes, I, I understand your Wall Offense are slow as well, so it's going to kind of match pace. But wouldn't you rather have something that when the Wall Offense are in position, you can just run down the Spirals in the blink of an eye? I would. Instead, actually, Hera the one going for a few horsemen here. Makes sense in this situation considering he can't afford anything else. Uh, but I, I don't know. I feel like scouts are still okay. It can be like a slowing force. But I guess his logic here is like it's going to be a unit that trades a bit better in melee. Right? Usually if you're going scouts, it's just strictly cannon fodder. And it's all about like sniping siege weapons. Something that 3DB hasn't engaged with. I would like to see Hera utilize this marketplace heavily right now, by the way. Huge food surplus. At the moment, he's using it for those aforementioned horsemen, but he could easily get his gold up. Like, he's starting to put people back on the step readout now. I think he can hit an in-page timing much quicker than 3DB can at this rate. Like, look at 3DB's resources. And this is something that Hera has to know, right? His opponents continue to show no let-up in the production of, of War Elephants, which means that he can't actually afford to go up a level. And I think that's maybe what's scaring Hera from investing in the switch over resources to get the in-page, is that... Right now, he needs the biggest force he can muster. Because he's about to be in problem town. However, you're seeing how quickly these war elephants do get popped. And the Spirals, just able to keep backing up. Even if the war elephants get in range, they're reaching a number where they can somewhat trade effectively. But it looks like he just wants to run them out of range entirely. He doesn't want to risk it. He needs to get in range of the Deer Stone to get that movement speed buff. If the Calm was here, he could also assist. I think the Calm was killed, right? Yeah, I think we did get the alert. So, No, he's around the back. It's a bit wonky with the placement of the Khan. Really needs him on the front line there. Villager will be sniped out trying to save a Springle, but 
Once again, that'll just be a back off 3DB. And he brought the Skulls to the front, so now he's able to just repair the damage done, right? He's able to heal these up fairly fast. The funny thing is, even when you're running into attack, they're still going to heal, right? Because War Elephants move so slow. And the other funny thing is, you don't actually have to attack. You can see it. 3DB just backs up. Because he has both the Sacred Sites, the pressure is now on Hera to do something. Hera still hasn't decapped the south one. I really would be a fan of him sending a single horseman over there. Because you can't send anything bigger. If you send a bigger force, then 3DB is going to seize your main base from his uh, military expansion here, right? So you just need to quickly decap that. Because right now, you're under pressure with the game ending. Not to mention the fact you're giving unneeded economy over to your opponent. He's getting an additional 200 gold for each of these sacred sites. And you can see the difference in gold per minute, right? It's ha like, what multiplier are we talking about here? That's like a 5x, almost 6x multiplier. This is getting painful. And Horsemen were once an amazing solution when you were up against the wall like this. But keep in mind, since then, folks, they have been nerfed. 20 less health at each level. And, you know, not really as impressive anymore. I mean, they have the extra range resistance, but you can't use them in these melee slogs. If you try and engage this War Elephant line, you're actually just going to melt in the blink of an eye. Have to see if there's any other move for Hera, though. Spiral's still coming out. Never any switch into infantry, so we can't just construct these out in the field, which is a bit of a bummer. But because he's reached that number, like he, he could start just slamming down these elephants. My, my concern is there's now 12 war elephants at this stage, hiding in a stealth forest next to the objective you have to decap. How are you going to do this? Someone's going to have to get close enough, and as soon as they do, these war elephants will kill them quickly, right? Like They are no joke, as you can see there. The 15 damage twice from the bows will quickly pick off individual units. You're going to have to have a overwhelming number of horsemen that can just plow in. And as I already said, I don't like that because it means that you're engaging with these war elephants that are just going to smash your face in with the tusks. Still non-stop. Fishing fleet is just ridiculous at this stage for 3DB. And the fishing has to be drying up soon for Hera. Yeah, the deep water fish was already on regeneration duty. It will slowly get there 50 at a time. But he's running out of shoreline fish to get through here. And the wood lines also starting to drain. And the war elephants are moving in. 3DB says, fine, if you don't want to come to me, I'll come to you and end the game. 15 war elephants, 29 mana arms. This is problem town. The slow march through. He can expose these horse. He can expose these archers and not care, right? The war elephants, it doesn't matter. The man arms move in, though, with a force march. Straight on top of the Springles. And the horsemen are trying to assist, but now they're going to be burnt to smithereens. He surrounds the horse archers, but the horsemen are just going to evaporate so quickly here. And while he tries to move the Springles away, half of them are already gone. And Hera, it looks like the game is done. 3DB with the decisive ending here. Force March is no joke, proven once more that Delhi do have these power moves, and 3DB is a power to be reckoned with himself. Whether he goes to those cheesy starts off the back of fishing rushes into attacking docks, or he looks for these cheesy plays in a tower wall elephants and man at arms, either way, he gets his wits. I believe that is uh, what uh, we call a uh, spicy meatball, huh? You guys like that one? You liked what you saw out of him? I kind of felt bad for Hera. That, that will still come back to the start of that game. The start of that game was absolutely incredible out of 3DB. Really big credit to Hera to bounce back the way he done. Like, when you consider how far he was behind on his economy, he actually recovered quite a decent amount of it, considering he was denied for so long at the opening of that game. Like, he actually should have been further behind. I, I imagine if I went back and watched every meticulous detail of 3DB, there might have been points where his dock wasn't producing uh, fishing vessels or, or something else was kind of like a little bit lax and lacking. Because really, like, realistically, Harris should have been further behind considering that he could not drop off his wood and also he couldn't produce his villagers for like a minute and a half, almost two minutes, right? So I think there definitely should have been maybe a bigger impact than we saw. Uh, it probably comes down to 3DB mismanaging his own economy a little bit. We actually saw in some different ways how he was kind of jump, like missing certain elements, such as the blacksmith wasn't researching, even though everything's free to research. 
Uh, so small details like that, definitely improvements 3DB can make. But that's the beauty of that guy, right? That's what I absolutely adore about 3DB, and that's why I think he's going to be an amazing force to be reckoned with in 2022, is this guy is clearly still, like, in his early days, he's still learning a lot, right? There's clearly a lot that he can still improve upon. But he's keeping that fire, right? He's keeping that va va voom is what I'm going to refer to it as. It's that piece of magic that you want to see. It's that piece of magic that you see out of Prodigies. The way that they play, the cockiness, the confidence, the flex. And you know some of it will disappear over time as he becomes hardened into a fine-crafted sword, right? But you hope that he keeps that sharp edge and you hope that he also keeps that quality like engraving on the side that reminds you of where it came from. And that is why I'm looking forward to 3DB's story.